Hello and welcome back to Lord Fenton Enemies Don't Panic series. I'm your host Lord Fenton. In today's Don't Panic series, we're going to be talking about Baldur's Gate 2 Enhanced Edition. Yep, this is a guide for new players who got into this game. This is a great and wonderful game. So the game starts off as you and your party members get captured by an evil dude who sounds like he's evil from the movie Time Bandits. You're thinking, I'm in prison, what should I do? I don't know what to do. Don't panic, help is on the way. So first off, let me explain about Baldur's Gate 2 and the three uh, games that are along with it inside, or say modules. Now first off is Shadows of Arm. This is where this guide will definitely cover. This is uh, starts off from a mid-level campaign to a high-level campaign. Throwing a Ball starts off in the epic levels, and in the Black Pits, it starts off from uh, mid to uh, epics. We're going to ignore Throwing a Ball and the Black Pits. Instead, we're going to talk about the Shadows of Arm the uh, game in question, and also the beginning guide of that game. So now you're taking the trip into the Shadows of Arm, Baldur's Gate 2 really, and you don't want to do. There's two ways to get into Baldur's Gate 2, import and creating a new character. I'll explain each one of the methods. Now first of all, male and female, pick anyone you like. Just trust me, there's romance in the game. However, females only have, I believe, total one romance if you're playing the original Baldur's Gate 2 game. If you play an enhanced edition, they add more romances to that. So now we're going to briefly talk about races. Now let me talk about multi-class and dual classing it is much more important than Baldur's Gate 1 because you get more uh, chances to do that. Multi-class, that means you're uh, leveling your two or three classes at the same time and only certain classes can have that combination. Dual class, for instance, is human only. That's human exclusive. And the thing about that is uh, it's very simple. If you're a level 13 fighter and you want to become a mage, then you need to have 14 levels in order to use the fighter's abilities. Otherwise, you're going to be a gimpy uh, mage. You can do this in any combination as long as you have the stats. So let's talk about races. Now, first of all, humans can become all classes in the game except for one door and defender. And they can only uh, dual class. And they have no uh, penalties or bonuses. Now, next up on the list is Elves. They have plus one dexterity, minus one constitution, they have infravision, and are almost immune to uh, charm and sleep magic. On the list next is Half Elves. They have 30% uh, resistance against charm and sleep spells and infravision, and some nice thieving abilities. Now, after the, uh, this race will be the Dwarves. Now, Dwarves have, I believe, plus one constitution, minus one dex, Minus two charisma. However, they have some nice resistance and infravision. On the list next is halflings. They have plus one dex, minus one strength, minus one wisdom. However, they have some nice resistance, and they have a uh, plus one taiko with slings. Now gnomes, on the other hand, they have infravision. They have more resistance, plus one intelligence, minus one wisdom, and they make great for a uh, illusionist. Now, half orcs, the last race is plus one strength, plus one constitution, minus two intelligence, infravision, and they do hit hard as a rock. So that's basically it for the races of the game. Now, next up are the classes. I'm going to touch up on them. Now, for even greater detail, I advise seeing my Icewind Dale guide or my Baldur's Gate 1 guide. Now, first of all, we're going to talk about fighters. They're frontline fighters. They can wear almost any helmets armor and they can also specialize grandmaster which is five ticks that have one d10 hit point dice and ken's eyes are the exception because they wear no armor but they hit like a truck and door defenders are more defensive based so now next up on the list of the uh, class is rangers now rangers can track enemies they can wear helmets they can wear any weapons and armor unless you pick a certain kit they start out with dual wielding and they also could track foes and if they're favorite enemies you get to do more bonus damage to them Archers are more archer flavor who does ranged attacks more. Stalkers are more uh, thieves rolled into a ranger. And Beastmasters are just ammo trainers, really. Now, next up are Paladins. They're the most uh, strict uh, class in the game, except for Black Guards. More on that later. Now, Paladins, they can lay hands. They can use any weapons and armor. Specialize in two ticks of uh, certain weapons. They may detect evil, protection from evil, turn undead like clerics, weaker enemy class priest spells. They also have to be lawful good. Now, black guards are evil, anti-paladins. They can come any evil. They have aurora of despair, poison weapons. They can also drain life and heal themselves. However, they cannot use the paladins' abilities. Good news is they're immune to drain and fear. Now, next up on the list are clerics. Clerics are uh, holy casters. They could cast 
spells to heal, attack undead, a little bit of offensive and even buff characters. They can also turn undead, which could either run, make them run in fear or destroy them. They can only use blunt weapons, however, they can use any armor and more. Now, the specializations, depending on which uh, path you want to take, you can do uh, direct damage, buffs, and even uh, more. Now, next up are uh, druids. They're like clerics, however, they do more nature and tune magic. They were up to, I believe, uh, leather, and they cannot use metal weapons. They could use certain weapons, but not all of them. There's some of them they'll actually uh, shape ship, and other times they can't. So pick which type of druid you want. So after that is a mage. Let me uh, quickly explain about the uh, mage class. Now mages cannot wear any armor. They're limited to very weapons. They have low hit point dice. However, they can scribe spells in their books and cast powerful spells. They are really powerful in this game if you know how to utilize them. Just trust me. Make sure you have higher the intelligence, the more you could learn. Remember that. Now, next up on the list is specialization. Avengers can specialize in protective magic. However, they cannot learn any alteration uh, school magic. Now, after that is conjurers. They conjure up creatures and objects to help them out. However, divination is forbidden to them. So they're basically summoners in this uh, specialization. Now, next up is diviners who uh, does detection and divining magic. However, they cannot conjure creatures, so conjuration is out of the uh, books for them. Now, next up are the enchanters. Now, enchanters, they can enchant and manipulate objects and minds of beings. However, invocation is off limits for them. Now, next up in this specialization is illusionists. They could deal with creating illusions, confuse, and mislead. However, bad news is they cannot learn necromancy, so no summoning undead for illusionists. Next up are Invokers, specialized in manipulation of raw and elemental energies. They do a lot of damage. However, enchantment is forbidden for them. So remember that, folks. Next up is Necromancer, specialized in dealing death, which includes raised dead, obliterating enemies via death magic. However, illusion spells are forbidden for them. And last but not least are Transmuser. They specialize in alteration of physical realities. That's good news, but Adjuration School is forbidden to them. Now next up on the uh, mage uh, class kit are uh, wild mages. Now wild mages here, they're like normal mages that can scribe spells in their scroll. However, when it casts a spell, there's wild search. When wild search happens, either good or bad random things happen. They do have spells that will uh, give them more of a little bit of a buff, but still that's a word of caution for them. They're more like more of an advanced class. Now next up are thieves. They can wear only up to studded armor. They can use certain blade and uh, blunt weapons. However, they have powerful backstab ability, which means they'll do uh, more damage when it's a foe from a the back. They can disarm traps, set traps, and it can become any alignment except for lawful uh, good. Their kit specializes in backstab damage, hide in shadows, and uh, more. Now, next up is the bard. They can sing songs, they can identify items better, and they can also, I believe, use some pickpocketing. Now, disadvantages, they can only become neutral. However, some bards have specializations such as blades or more offensive bards. Scouts will uh, do uh, more offensive songs, and gestures are just chaotic. So, bards are like jack all trades, master of uh, none. Now, next up on the list is sorcerers. Now, sorcerers are like uh, mages. They can only use certain uh, limited number of weapons, they can use only cloth. They have weak hit point dice. The difference between the two is, is mages scribe scrolls. Sorcerers learn from so you need to pick and choose which spells are best for your situation throughout the entire game So just be careful Now next up are monks. They can only from lawful alignment. They cannot use any armor They can use a certain amount of weapons. They are better with their fists However, they have nice abilities such as quivering palm, which is instant death strike and their fist spell will uh, actually uh, Level up into a uh, plus weapons later on they become immune to normal weapons now the two class kits are a uh, good flavor and evil flavor So that's basically it for the uh, monks now, next up is the shamans. Now, the shamans can only wear uh, leather studded and hide armor. They are like uh, sorcerers in the form of druid spells, so you just pick and choose your druid spells you want to learn from them. They also have special dances. When they use dances, they summon animals to help them out, and uh, more, they're restricted to only neutral alignment. Now, here is a warning. When you pick this class, no strongholds. If you play a shaman, repeat, no strongholds. And that does it real quick about all the classes in Baldur's Gate 2. We're going to talk about the next section. 
Now, next up is alignment. Now, classes are certainly restricted certain alignments. So let's go over this real quick. Lawful good, that means you believe in the greater good as long as people follow the laws and as long as the laws are uh, benefiting everybody. Now, uh, neutral good, you could break some laws or uh, not why you do it for the greater good. It's always about the greater uh, good and being a good guy. Now, chaotic good throws laws out the window. They break the laws in order to do good things. Think of uh, chaotic people as like Robin Hood. Steal from the rich and give to the poor. Now, next up is lawful neutral. They follow the laws, don't care if it's good or evil. They're right down the middle for the laws. Now, next up is uh, true neutral. Let me go over that. Now, true neutral is a balance between good and evil, law and uh, chaos. Yeah, so that means if uh, nulls are being attacked, after uh, the uh, good guys are winning, they'll join the null side. Now, chaotic neutral, they don't care about laws. However, they do not care about good and evil. Gamblers are a sample of that. They'll gamble all their money away and more. Now, lawful evil, let me explain. They'll use the uh, rules to their will, and they'll bend their uh, ways as long as the laws benefit them. They're really evil. Now, neutral evil, they'll follow some rules as long as it benefits themselves, and they'll break a few rules as long as it benefits themselves. Think of mercenaries as one case. Now, chaotic evil, they don't care about rules, they don't care about people, and they rule by uh, power. If they perceive you as weak, they'll destroy you. Think of it as a cutthroat buccaneer as that, and monsters. So that's it for alignments. So now, next up is abilities. Now, real quick, when you uh, do create a character in Baldur's Gate 2 or in your Infinity Engine uh, games or Dungeon Dragon 2.0, you have to roll uh, character stat sheets. Now, that's the exception of Planescape Torment, but that's another uh, guide. So, my advice when you're rolling your character, get to the 80s plus on that. Once you can, then uh, store it and then uh, allocate your stats accordingly. So, this way, you'll get the right sweet spots for stats. Just remember your classes and which uh, main uh, stat you want, and two other stats, secondly and thirdly. So, that's my advice about stats. And I'm going to go over some of the uh, attributes or abilities next. So here they are in uh, Bar's Gate 2 this time. First of all, his strength is how uh, much uh, damage you could do physically. Higher strength, more physical damage. You can carry more things, stronger you are. And more now for strength rolls, 18 will be basic unless your fires will be 1 through 100. 0, zero is the best to aim for for fires. Now next up is dexterity is... Uh, your hand-eye coordination and uh, more dexterity, the lower your armor class, and the harder you are to hit. Up on the list next is constitution, which is physical resistance, and also adds more health. So more constitution, more health you will gain. You also resist more diseases. Next up on the list is intelligence. More intelligence you have, more amount of scrolls you can uh, scribe in spells. Low intelligence, that means you cannot cast spells at all. Same thing with the next stat is wisdom. More wisdom you have more uh, ability to cast uh, divine spells. Now, low wisdom scores means you kind of cast divine spells. See Minx. Last but not least is charisma is how people persuade you around you. Less charismatic, more people will look at you ugly. More charismatic, people will actually will do things for you. So that's good for this game. That is it for the uh, attributes or abilities. Now, next up are skills. Now, in Baldur's Gate 1, you started with two ticks. Since you're going to be automatically starting a higher level than one, you get six. So pick accordingly uh, which path you want to do. I'm just doing a two-handed fighter. Any uh, formation is good as long as you know what you're uh, doing or favor. So that's about it for uh, skills. So I'm going to spot talk about the uh, character creation part. The last part's next. Now next part is your appearance. So for skin, you can look like you're a drow, a normal humanoid being, or an orc. Same thing with clothing, you do any what you want, it's just flavor. Now, sound is different than Baldur's Gate 1. One of the male voices did get replaced, however, the Siege of Dragon Spirit voices are not there. Now, here's my final advice, go wherever class you want to go. Now, if you were doing this method, a word of warning, whatever uh, class you have, you start with uh, A9K experience points. That's less than uh, x from the Baldur's Gate Tells the Sword Coast, if you did that content, or bury it. Baldur's Gate 1 plus the Siege of uh, Dragon Spear. So we're going to talk about the next section, importation of uh, characters. Now, next up on the list is the uh, importation of characters. You have two ways to do it. A character file, if you save the character file from the previous Baldur's Gate game, or your save file. That's two ways of doing it. They're both the same. So we're going to show one method, which is uh, import from a character file. So if you save from Baldur's Gate 1 or any of the expansions in there, 
and that files there. And number two is saves. When you save from Baldur's Gate 1 and any expansions, which is the uh, base game, Tales of Sword Coast, or Siege of Dragon Spear, you'll port those in. Now, Tales of Sword Coast plus Baldur's Gate 1 is 161k experience points cap Y, 500k experience uh, cap is for Siege of Dragon Spear. So once that's done, select it and you'll be off and ready to go. Now while I'm doing appearances, my final advice is a simple character creation that's 89k experience points. You'll be just a little bit low totem Why 161k tells a sword coast. You'll be uh, up there and Caesar Drag Spear give you an unfair advantage. Now a new thing they did in Baldur's Gate 2 Enhanced Edition was out of party members. Now if you don't want to deal with the uh, NPCs they are predetermined and create your own part. This is just like Icewind Dale. However, the rules are the same for Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. Your main character dies, your leader, that's it, game over. The other five party members could die and get resurrected. My advice is, is first time out, experience the game with the uh, characters in the game and on higher difficulties when you're doing your second or third plus playthrough, create your own party because you're in control of uh, your character creation and development. So that's my advice there. Now let's go with difficulty. <laughs> yes, first of all is story mode. Basically your characters cannot die. You experience the story, no problems. This is just like easy button and god mode on. Yeah, nobody dies. This is just like simple mode. My advice on this, don't do it please. Next up it's easy. Yeah, your characters could die. However, you'll get max hit points. You'll never spell uh, spell books. And enemies do uh, less damage against you. Normal mode is just normal, it's just uh, differences, it's just uh, enemies deals 25% uh, less damage. And uh, same thing as easy mode. Now core rules is just in the mill, that means you can fail in uh, writing down spells. You won't get max hit points, so safe scumming is recommended in this mode. Now hard mode, enemies will hit 50% more harder, and they are more uh, stronger, and there's a small chance that you may face new enemies. Think of it like the Divinity Original Sin series. Now, insane mode, 100% uh, more damage. You might face different counter enemies too. They might be harder. Think of it like the Vinny Rizal Sin uh, Tactician mode. Now, warning about Legacy of Vault, they'll throw everything at you. Enemies will hit harder, they'll be smarter, improve Tycho, just basically double the hit points of enemies, and they're brutal. You want my final advice about difficulty? Go with core rules, normal or easy. Start at those three. Don't do story mode and don't do the other difficulties unless you're an expert. So stick with easy, normal, or uh, core rules. That's it overall. Now next up is the UI and this is what the world looks like right there. You can zoom in, zoom out. You can also uh, turn off AI. You can pause the game. Lower right hand corner with the gears is your day and night. Select the characters you want. So let's go with each UI section. Right there, there's your map right there. It tells you where you're at. Now there's little pins right there. It tells you uh, places of interest or point of interest. You can also make your pens too. So now next up is the journal. This will tell you important events. This will also tell you your main quest, your side quest, and your character's thoughts. You can also write that in if you're playing the PC version. So that's it about that for the uh, journal. So now next up is your uh, inventory. On the lower bottom corner is your uh, weight. The stronger your characters, more they can carry. Certain quick slots will be open for classes, which is uh, very good. Now let's go on the right hand side. First of all is your armor class. Lower your armor class. Less likely your foes will hit. And then your uh, class uh, hit point level. More constitution, more bonus hit points you uh, get now uh, Tycho. For instance, if your character's Tycho is uh, 17 and the foe's armor class is 1, you need to roll a 16 in order to hit him. Same thing if your uh, armor class is 1 and their foe's uh, Tycho is 17, they need to roll a 16 to hit you. So lower your armor class less likely you're going to be hit. Now improve your Tycho, you get your uh, specialization weapons and look for certain items for that. Now your two hit is your uh, measurement, your two hit. Also on the lower right is your uh, ground where you pick up ground items. And one more advice, magic weapons important, go look for them. Plus three or better is ideal for this game, especially against demons. Now next up on your uh, screen is your stats. This will tell you how many enemies you killed the most. This will be information about your character including their next level up. My uh, Kenzai is almost there, well Kenzai Mage. This also will uh, tell you biography, your uh, stats such as strength, dexterity, and constitution. Also will also tell you reputation. Just remember, higher your reputation, the more good guy you are. Lower your reputation, the more evil you are. 
So remember that about reputation. Also, it'll tell you about spells and abilities too there too. So let's talk about the spells. First of all, this is your mage spell book. If any of your characters are uh, your uh, mages or uh, wild mages or even sorcerers, this is where your spells go for this. Now after this, this is your priest scroll. This is where priests, druids, shaman, or any of the uh, divine casters go here to memorize their stuff too. So remember that. That's very important to learn. Now next up is your uh, characters uh, who will interact with you. You're going to see in a few moments. As soon as I hit that rest button, which is the uh, sun down, we rest. And everyone's question why you're resting there too. Now romances do happen like that too. So if you're afraid of triggering a romance, I said suggest saving before entering an area or before exiting it. And if a romance does trigger, then just pick the choices, wrong choices. Just wait for that trigger again. That's how character interactive is. So now I'm going to show everybody quickly the level up system before I quickly talk about the save system for the last part. When you level up, depending on what you uh, get, you get more spells, you get to put more points in certain skills and uh, more. Now for saving, very important. Save often, save early, save whenever. So this way, if something goes wrong, you can load up your save. Save, save, save. Now, next up is combat. Combat is uh, very simple. Once enemies are uh, red circle, they'll attack you. That means you can attack them too. Also, you could also force uh, certain NPCs to go red circle if you take them off too many times or you decide to attack them. Now, we hit the pause button. That's the gears. When the gears stop, that's when you pause the game. You can plan your... Uh, spells ahead of time and just be careful. Also plan your team accordingly. So I'm showing everybody a demonstration in combat. Now combat, enemies will interrupt you more in Baldur's Gate 2 than 1. Yeah, they will interrupt you more. So keep your uh, casters, such as uh, your uh, druids or your clerics in the back. Same thing with uh, mages. Keep everybody else front line. Except for uh, rogues, just put them in a certain position. Now if you're a shadow dancer and make them disappear, well you can set them up for backstabs. And if they're already stealthy, well, you can go in there and backstab someone, then run back and just uh, pull them. That's a valid tactic right there. So that's what combat's all about. My advice about combat and the newbie dungeon is, uh, yeah, learn everything from it, because you can be thrust out in this world right away as soon as you end escape Arrhenicus' dungeon. So that's it about for uh, combat portion of this uh, video. So let's talk about the uh, next portion of it. Now, next up on the list are strongholds. Real quick about strongholds, they're uh, class specific. Certain areas in the game will give you certain quests to do. You do the first initial quest, you have access to a stronghold. Like I said before, shamans do not have stronghold accesses. They can do the quests, but they cannot. Good news is the other classes could do the stronghold first quest, however they'll be locked off from the other ones. Now here's my advice about dual classing and multi-classing. You have to pick and choose. For instance, if you're a Kenzai mage, which is a fighter with a, a cloth armor, however they hit like a truck and they're mages. You have a choice, fire stronghold or mage stronghold such as this one right here. You have a choice on those. Same thing if you uh, try class so if you're a fighter, mage, and thief, you have a selection between a thief, fighter, or mage stronghold. You pick one, that's it. The other ones are locked out. Also my advice about quests since I am in this section right here, do many quests as possible. They'll benefit you. Even stronghold quests that are uh, you can't get access beyond the first one when it's done. Do them all. You'll get experience points, gold, and even some loot. That's correct. Even do some character quests. They're great. Some of them are time sensitive, so be careful on that. And that's my final advice about stronghold and quests. Now, real quick about traveling. This is how you travel. Just click at a location. That's it. If you had the edge of the map. There's a circle gear, that's where you go. Now when the map screen is on there, that's if you already discovered location, you know where to go. However, there is time. Time elapses when it goes, so if you're doing those time quests, be careful on that. Click the location and you're ready to go. It's very easy to do. It's very uh, simple. So that's how you uh, travel in this game. Now next part is sleeping. Now you can sleep outside, except for cities. It's dangerous and these could spawn. Now if you go to an inn, you're basically safe. Well, mostly safe. There might be a few encounters on that, but still, ends cost money. Outside is free, but it's danger. Now, here's my uh, final advice about this game. Now, there's magical weapons. Go for anything that's beyond plus one. Higher it is, the better it is. Get your weapons our specialization. Now, there's a forge layer on uh, both uh, Om 
Chow's Om in the uh, Throne of Ball Baldur's Gate 2 games. You want to go for those recipes big time. Romance, experience them, it's great and wonderful. Do many quests as possible, including character ones. Align with party members who are uh, your alignment. It helps immensely. And last but not honestly, save, save, save. That's very important. Also visit Joaquin's Promenade because it has some items, especially the Adventures Mark. It has some nice uh, starter items to buy too. Well, that is it for my Don't Panic Bars Gate 2 Enhanced Edition New Player Video Guide. This is Lord Fenton signing off. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day or night, everyone.